In the last 30 days, the town of Boston has had two structure fires where families lost their homes. And we had another chimney fire not too long ago where they were affected as well. Um, this time of year, there is generally an uptick in these types of emergencies. We have Christmas time and dry trees, uh, lots of wrapping paper for all those kitties. <laughs> so the fire departments, the first responders, the emergency squad all got together. We wanted to bring the public in, just go over some basic safety that a lot of us have learned since third grade. But in time, we've, been, we've gotten complacent. We just say, you know, it's not gonna happen to me. If I let that go for five minutes, I've been, you know, 30, 40 years, however old I am, it's never happened. Why would it happen now? It does. We have families in town that have been affected, and I'm sure they thought the same thing. So today we're going to start off with the New York State Troopers. They have a presentation for us with winter driving safety. And the first response, we're going to have a short program uh, with a couple videos at the end. And we're going to wrap up with the uh, Erie County Sheriffs are here with their fire investigation unit. And they have their dog as well. So that might be a little something exciting towards the end. So I hope you guys like. I'm going to pass around to the State Troopers. Thank you. Okay, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Tom O'Sartek. I'm a sergeant in the New York State Police, and I am also the station commander of Boston Bear. Um, so I, uh, I'm here today to do this uh, winter driving safety presentation, and uh, I'll start out with a couple of apologies. The, the New York State Police does not actually have a nice PowerPoint presentation about winter driving safety, which is weird. I, when I was asked to come do this, I, uh, I said, hey, send me that, that PowerPoint with winter driving safety tips. And they're like, what PowerPoint with winter driving safety tips? So, uh, so I, uh, I did what we all do now, is I, I went on the internet and uh, I found uh, this one. So this one is, uh, is, done, is, is actually done for the, uh, the crew of the USS Monterey, uh, which is a, a guided missile cruiser, US Navy. So uh, I used to be in the Navy, so I feel like I can use this and probably not get arrested. So, uh, so anyway, this is uh, those of us around here. We we do get we do get bad weather. It snows. It's snowing now. This is the kind of day that I'll be telling you probably should stay home. Uh, but I'm glad you all came. And uh, this it's, it's always better if these things are interactive. So if you have uh, any questions or comments, um, most of us I've gone through this a few times. So. The, most of the material in here is, is appropriate, um, but everybody has their own different suggestions and thoughts about things. So, um, so we'll go through this together, if you will, and, uh, and by all means, if you have questions or comments, let's, let's talk about it, because when we talk about it, everybody learns something. So, um, so here we go. So winter driving safety. We're gonna talk about first, we're gonna talk about all this stuff, hazards, how to prepare for a trip if you're going somewhere, uh, Emergency kit to keep in your car at all times. Um, I don't know why I should do that. But uh, we're going to talk about what to do if your tires begin to slide. Uh, we're going to talk about snowplow safety and then, you know, these questions. So here's some of the hazards of winter driving. We all know slick roadways, increased chance of skidding. You get dirt, dirt sand on the windshield. Then of course, for us, we've had we've had people over the last couple of years that have died in their vehicles. Uh, the blizzard, um, that's that's a problem. Uh, but you have to be prepared for that, and it could be on a, any short trip. Okay, so the big thing for us, and this is probably why the state police doesn't have one of these presentations, because the answer for us to everything is slow down. So and we sort of have a way to encourage people to slow down. Um, and, uh, you know, my, uh, my station, we are responsible for the 219 uh, and the 400, and then in bad weather, uh, the troopers handle the 219, and then the Erie County Sheriff's handles the 400. Uh, and so we deal with a lot of the issues that are going to come up on this all the time. And the troopers that are out there, the number one thing that, that gets you in trouble in winter driving is like it says here, overdriving, driving too fast, braking too hard. Uh, that 90% of the problems that people have driving in bad weather like this is caused by driving too fast and stopping too fast, sudden changes of lane. All right, so 
you got to ask yourself when you're going out in the spring or the, in the fall, start thinking about this. Is, is my car ready up, up to date? Does my, does my car have everything that it needs? Check the weather. You know, we don't, the, the weather is everywhere. It's on, the, it's on the radio. It's on your phones. If it looks like it's going to be a winter storm or there's, there's going to be, there's going to be ice, there's going to, like today, it's going to rain and then it's going to freeze. Uh, before I came here, my, my truck was coated with ice. So those are very bad uh, driving conditions. We, we were driving back, my family and I, from New Jersey um, a few weeks ago, actually early December, and uh, it started pouring rain. And I looked at the thermometer on the, on the dashboard, it said 27 degrees. So what, what does that mean? So that's, that's very bad. That was that ice storm that you might have heard about on the news that came across uh, across the, the east coast there. So, so you want to make sure you're prepared. So, make sure you have that. Um, all right. So now, if you're going to get out there and drive around, make sure that you clean your car off. This is something I, I know for those of you that that are in the, the fire department. Uh, certainly for us, how many times have you been behind a vehicle with your lights on and they have the big pile of snow on the back window and they have no idea you're there, none whatsoever. And so that's, that's a big deal. So clean your car. There's actually even a section of the vehicle and traffic law that allows us to write a ticket for somebody who doesn't clean their, their car off. So please do that. Take the extra time. All right, so now this is getting your car ready. So in the fall, like I said, make sure that your, your vehicle is prepared for winter. Make sure your tires are good. Tires are a huge thing. Uh, the state police now uses, uh, we have winter tires. They have the little, that, that little uh, mountain with a snowflake on it. If your tires have that on it, that means that, that they are, there's special rubber compounds, special rubber compounds on there that, uh, that means that that tire is a little softer when the when the weather and the temperature conditions get very cold. Rubber tends to turn into hard plastic, and that's going to help you to make you slide off the road. But those winter tires, if you can afford them, because they're not cheap, I understand that. Uh, they uh, that rubber still has a little pliability to it, and it'll it'll help keep you on the road. Check all your make sure your batteries so you can start in the morning. Check your antifreeze levels. All right, brakes, all the usual stuff. Here's one that's hard for a lot of us, is maybe get up a little earlier. If, if normally it takes you 15 minutes to get to work when it's 75 and sunny, when it's like this today, it could take you a half hour. And you know what? If you're late for work, be late for work. All right, don't worry about it. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't imagine you're going to get fired for being late for work one time. So um, just get there safe. That's the important thing. Because you're going to have to drive slow, like we said. You're going to have to... You know, leave a little earlier, perhaps. It's going to take you more time to get from point A to point B. Another good thing people say is keep your gas tank half full. I, I you know, said that for a lot of reasons. Number one, for weight. Sometimes the weight will help keep the car planted on the road. We've had, back to those storms in the last several years, um, having an empty gas tank and you're stranded in a snowbank on the side of the road, if we can't get to you, you may have to pull up for the night in your car. And if your car is not running, if the heater isn't functioning, you have a real problem. I just want to add, if your muffler is blocked, if you're on, off the road. Yep, so you don't absolutely. Want to smoke out your own car. Yep, you have to, and you have to definitely think about that. Which one of the things in the, in the, the kit that you keep in your car is a small shovel. And one of the things you would do with that shovel is exactly uh, what Dave said: is you would use that to clean away an area so that the exhaust can, can vent properly and not circle back into the car. Cell phone. Um, I keep going back, but these are all fairly fresh memories. Uh, one of the individuals we were trying to get to, his uh, cell phone died. So the last time we knew where he was was several hours before. And we usually we can do cell phone pings. Uh, we can talk to him and just see if he's OK, where he is. Uh, if your cell phone is dead, and you have no way to charge it, then that makes it very, very difficult for us to find you. Uh, so make sure you have, definitely bring your phone with you, definitely bring a charger, maybe even one of those little, you can get them at Walmart, those little battery packs that'll charge your phone two or three times uh, before you have to recharge that device. Uh, the other thing is the cold. 
those uh, the lithium batteries in your phone. It, it happened, I'm sure it happens to you guys. I know it happens to us. I'll get out of my troop car and my phone will have 80% battery. And then after being in 20 degree weather for 15 minutes, I've got 10%. And then it shuts down. So you got to make sure that your phone uh, stays stays uh, at room temperature. Okay, so this is a little bit about the vehicle. So rear wheel, rear wheel drive vehicles. Part of the thing you want to keep in the vehicle kit is a bag of sand. You can use that for weight. As those of us who have pickup trucks, throw a few. Uh, as you are on, just to give you guys a sip. Um, so a little extra weight in the back of the vehicle is good, and then in a pinch that can be used to to throw down on the on the roadway to maybe help you get some traction. Um, Right. Apparently the Navy in this slide is, I, I thought this was a little baffling, but they want you guys to wash and wax your car before winter. Make sure, it, you know, I guess you make your car last. Um, fresh coat of wax. All right, so there's, uh, that's probably what it would look like today if you were driving around. All right, so make sure your lights are operational. All, you know, check that out. Make sure that your brake lights, your tail lights, your high beams, your low beams, make sure that's that's all operational. Make sure your, your vehicle, the fluids in your car are up to date. And washer fluid. How many of you have run out of washer fluid on a day when the, you're getting that that road you know, moisture uh, going up there? That that could be the worst thing ever. You literally have to stop throw snow. I mean, it's, it's a nightmare. And you gotta have you gotta have that. So always keep an extra bottle of that stuff in the trunk. All right, fluids. Now, most of this now is, when you guys change your oil, I'm sure you're aware of this, most of the oils can handle the, uh, the, the temperature variances, uh, but make sure you just check the little reservoir for your antifreeze. Uh, again, if you're stuck in a snowbank or you're stuck in, in a snowstorm and your engine's overheated and it can't run, then you're, you're in some trouble. All right, so wiper blades, also very important. There are winter wiper blades, you, know, I, I, you gotta just use what works, but just check them out. If you change your wiper blades once a year, then make sure that uh, you do it before winter. Okay, here's tires. So, check your tires. If you have good, if you have good tires, no matter if they're all season or if they are those winter tires I was talking about, they're probably gonna be better than nice, you know, old ball tires. Right? Usually for us, we change our tires when they get to 5.30 seconds left. That's when the, the state police says they, they need to be replaced. Um, I think most, uh, like the insurance industry and that, I think they say 2.30 seconds. But you know your vehicle, you all here have driven in snow uh, so that, that you know when your car's tires are beyond their serviceable life. Also, we hear this all the time, Few years back, especially about proper inflation. Just make sure your tires are inflated correctly. All right, so driving tips. Like we said before, make sure you decrease your speed. One of the big things that, that I always preach about is following distance. No matter winter, summer, whatever, you want to have a good following distance. Um, the reason for that is because your, your car covers covers a tremendous distance per second. And if you think about it, if you want to, you say, if your brain realizes I have to stop and you're one second behind the car in front of you, and that's even, that's a pretty good distance. But if you decide, oh, I have to stop, your brain has to process that. It has to tell your foot to move from the gas to the brake. And then the vehicle has to do its job. And then all those things like, are my tires good? Is the road slippery? Is, uh, do I have uh, anti-lock brakes or not? All those factors come into play, and if you're only one second behind that car, too late, you're gonna hit it. So, always need a good following distance. Um, you guys know braking gently. Don't, don't slam on the brakes. If you have a good following distance, you can usually anticipate what might be coming your way. So, you can gently apply the brakes. Most cars these days have anti-lock braking systems, which are, which are excellent compared to what we used to have. Um, but still, you don't you don't have to mash it down uh, right away. If you have that appropriate following distance, you'll have time to brake perhaps uh, without without having a, being in a panic. 
Another thing, obviously, turn your lights on. It doesn't hurt to drive with the lights. Most cars have daytime running lights as, as, as part of the law, but turning on your actual headlights in any kind of inclement weather is always a good idea. Daytime running lights also don't turn on your taillights. Correct, yes. And if you're, you guys know probably, when you are driving, especially if you have a, a, like a pickup truck, if you're driving with snow on the road, um, snow will build up on the back of your vehicle and it could obscure your taillights. And so, like Dave said, if your taillights uh, are off and that, uh, and that snow builds up back there, no one will see your lights if you break. They'll have much, much greater uh, reduced visibility on if you're braking or not. So it is, that is a good point. Okay, today, the ice is this kind of thing. So this year it seems to be a good year for the rain when it's 27 degrees. Why here it rains? We've had that a few times. Um, the roads like the 219, they get, they get glazed over with this ice. And if you're going 55, 60 miles an hour, and even the, even the crown of the road, the left lane seems to be crowned more to, to pull you off onto the, into the median, more so than the right lane. So if you're in that left lane and you get past uh, Rice Road, Brown, Brown Hill Road area, where the, the two DOT uh, barns actually, where their control areas, if you will, exchange, um, you could slide right off the road without doing anything wrong. But that's where the speed comes in, into play. Um, black ice, we, we know what that is. Um, okay, four-wheel drives. Now, they're wonderful for getting up and going, but they cannot stop any better uh, than any any other car. So no matter, you can you probably go through a foot of snow, some of the trucks that we see, but the bottom line is that you can't stop any faster and likely you do not have any more uh, control, steering control with, with a vehicle like that. So make sure you keep that in mind. All right, so here's uh, with the steering wheel. So if, if you're on icy roads, the worst thing you can do is, is jerky movements. Uh, sometimes if you get in, in the ruts where the, the slush is on the road, the best thing to do, take your foot off the gas, keep the car gently on, on its course, and then as the vehicle slows down, the weight of the vehicle is gonna overcome that slush that what's happening is you're riding on top of it. So the vehicle is gonna slow down, its weight is going to start pushing through that slush, and then you're going to have you're going to have yourself you're going to be back in control of that vehicle. Um, all right, and then we just discussed uh, interlock brakes. All right, so this is the other part too. Uh, if, if you're following your your GPS, of course not holding it in your hand, but if you're, if you're following your GPS, going to your destination, you don't really know where you're going, and it's telling you you know turn left right now, and you just passed it. Don't worry about it. Go down to a safe place, turn around, come back. Don't hit your hit the brakes, do something crazy and slide off, off the road. Uh, so you want to do the best you can to anticipate those, those turns. Okay, trucks. So it's always my advice is, like it says here, steer clear of, of the big trucks. All right, they, uh, I, we don't know if that, if that trailer is loaded. We don't know if it's empty. If it's empty and it's driving in high winds, like we're supposed to have uh, tonight and tomorrow, that, that trailer can get away from this person. And it, it, it used to be, we thought that, we would always say that the, uh, the truck drivers are the best drivers on the road. And sometimes that's still true. And then sadly, a lot of times it's not true. Uh, we run into a lot of people that they are literally just following their GPS. I mean, we, we back trucks down uh, Herman Hill all the time. Uh, you know, like, what, what do you think? You know, well, the GPS said you Okay. So that, that kind of thing is, is, a, is a big problem for us. Um, when, they, when they close the throughway, all those vehicles end up going on to 20A heading, heading west, or 20 or 20A. And so then you get all these big trucks that are in a place that they wouldn't normally uh, But here they are, and they can easily go off the road. So if you're driving, if you're like on the 219, and you're next to one of those, if, if you're going to pass them, do the best you can to get past them. 
my advice is just, you know, have patience, get, get behind, and get to your destination safe. this theme repeating itself about the speed, that, that is the one thing you can, you can do to keep yourself out of trouble. Speed, following distance. Here we go. Alright, so the emergency kit. So we got to have an ice scraper, you got to have a, a snow shovel. The, the people that we stopped that haven't cleaned off their cars, they usually tell us about the credit card they were trying to use to clean off the windshield. So, um, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe they're, they're, somebody in their family stole their ice scraper, I don't know. But uh, but it's important to have that stuff. That's, it's got to be in your car. You've got to have that. The shovel, like, like we discussed earlier, if you do get stuck, you've got to make sure those tailpipes are clear of snow because that, that carbon monoxide will start backing up into the car. Uh, maybe some sand for, for extra weight. And also to give your tires some traction. Um, those players, if you're comfortable using them, some kind of a, some kind of a light. Um, if you have a flashlight, that's always a great thing to have. Uh, they, they talk about blankets, um, a small candle. That people are using that if, if the car runs out of gas. That's for for warmth of the car. A candle in enclosed space uh, will will provide some heat. Um, so some people, if you're, if you're able to, uh, if you know what you're doing with tow chains, tire chains, some areas of the country you have to have <coughs> center tires to drive. Not, not so much here, but, uh, but I know some, some guys like to have them in their trucks to help people get out of, out of problems. Definitely extra clothing. So if you have an old jacket, blanket, any, you know, gloves, hat, all that stuff that you were going to throw away, Stick it in a duffel bag and throw it in the trunk of your car. Stick it in, and then in, in the event of an emergency, you or someone that might be with you could use that extra clothing. And that, that could be a lifesaver. All right, here's non-perishable energy food, so granola bars, water stuff to keep in the car if, if you in, in frozen temperatures. But you should have something to sustain yourself. We had in that once the left once more recently we had we had troopers stuck in their cars for, for over 24 hours. Um, so the state decided to uh, supply uh, MREs to us. So now when they go out in a storm, they'll take MREs with them um, and and water because that, that was our own people were, were not necessarily. Car begins to steer or slide, excuse me. Okay, those of us who learned how to drive before anti lock brakes, you used to pump the brakes. With anti lock brakes, you don't need to do that. The, the vehicle itself will pump the brakes for you. Um, just remember, you have to just, and you have to know your vehicle. You, you kind of have to know how to drive in this weather. You know if you need to mash the pedal and just push it to the floor and let you know let the car handle it. Or if you can sort of gently pressure the pedal and maybe not activate the, the ADS. Uh, you have to decide based on that situation that you're in. Uh, obviously take your foot off the accelerator. That's always an important thing to do. And then steer in the direction that you want the front wheels to go. So they always say steer in the direction of the curve. So if, if the, the back end of the car is sliding to the right, you want to gently turn the wheel to the right. And that, that way you'll, you'll start to maintain control of the car and execute that, that curve or get back on the straight. All right, so what we see a lot of people do is they, what we call, is they overcorrect. So they start sliding, then they correct it, but they went too far. So then the back end, instead of swinging back to straight, it'll swing back to, let's say if you were sliding to the right, it'll swing all the way back to the left. And then once that happens, they go back the other way and they get in, and at some point they can't control it anymore and they spin out and end up in the median. So you have to, even though when your car is sliding, that, that is, can be terrifying, 
at times, especially if you're on one of the big roads, you have to gently, you turn that wheel gently, don't overdo it. Slowing down, having that wheel, the steering wheel going in the right direction, once that car starts to slow down, like I said, it's going to bring itself back around. Alright, so if you get stuck, it kind of depends on your vehicle. If you have front wheel drive versus rear wheel drive, if you have a four wheel drive truck with blocking axles, how you, what you do to get yourself out of, out of the problem, you know your vehicle, you have to do, you have to make a decision based on your vehicle. And then here's what, if you're stuck and you can't get out, all right, make sure you crack a little window. Like Dave said, keep the exhaust pipe clear of snow so carbon monoxide doesn't come back in the wheel and don't, or in the vehicle, and don't spin your wheels. It will only dig you in deeper. Okay, so if you become stranded, the best thing you can do is call 911. The way, in, a, in a serious winter storm, the way that we do things now is they're, they're going to have uh, a complaint desk, if you will. All the agencies that are out here will know where we've all decided, okay, we've established the, uh, the incident command system, so all the calls are going to go into one place. And then you're, when you call in and say, I'm here and I'm stuck, I'm in the median, they're going to take all your information, they'll take your cell phone, and then they're going to dispatch the closest uh, vehicle, police vehicle, to come and assist you. So the most important thing to do is to call for help first. You can call, you know, your mom, your dad, whoever, later. Um, call us first. Because sometimes we, we do have a limited amount of resources, and it is going to take time for us to get to you. Because our vehicles are not much more capable than yours. Um, so make sure that, that you call us. And then start thinking about those other things we said. Look at your cell phone. Is it, do I need to charge my phone? If I didn't plug it in before, plug it in now. Make sure that that tailpipe is clear. And that, of course, is if you're in a safe place. Um, so, if you slide off in the median on the 219, you're probably okay there. But you want to take a, assess the situation. Um, if you happen to be on the 219 and you're in the driving lane, that is a dangerous place to be. And I can't tell you one thing or another to do. Um, you have to make that decision on your own. But if you're in the driving lane and there is low visibility, you're in trouble. And my suggestion is you definitely have to start thinking about getting away from that vehicle. If you can, if, even if, if you have to take your vehicle to the if you can drive it in the ditch. We, we've been instructed, actually, if you're on the road, we're going to push you in the ditch. We're going to get you to safely safety and we're pushing your car into the median because it's far more dangerous to have something on that road uh, in the way of the next 18 wheeler that's coming than it is to just deal with the insurance later. Uh, you're the most important thing. We want to get you to safety. The other thing is, sometimes, again, this is everyone's own personal decision, but like I said, calling a family member or a friend to come and get you. So if you're off the road on the 219 and you're calling a friend to come and pull you out of the median, that is not a good idea. If you're on one of the back roads here that has very low traffic, I don't know. I still don't think it's a great idea, but um, you know, we're not going to yell at you if you take care of your problem yourself. Most folks around here can handle a lot of stuff on their own. But if you're on the 219 and someone's coming up there and they maybe have a winch or they got the toe strap and they're going to try and pull you out of the ditch, that, that's going to be a problem. So my advice is uh, don't, don't do that. But definitely call us first. All right, soapbox. State plows drive, I think, between 30, 30 and 40 miles an hour. I could be wrong, but it's slow. And so you want to you pass it. Everybody does. Uh, so, you have to be careful because they have a job to do. They're not going to swerve off the road to avoid you. And if you get hit by a snowplow, some of you I'm sure have had uh, experience with someone who has, 
that it doesn't doesn't go well. So uh, they're always dropping the salt. Um, we, we had a, a person uh, come to this nation the other day. They were going opposite one of the county plows and it picked up a chunk of ice. It literally smashed the front. I mean, his front wheel looked like it, it was completely demolished, and it was just from a piece of ice that the blade, plow blade caught, and it, it just hit his windshield. That, if you didn't expect that to happen, you're just driving to work, in, which is what he was doing, just driving to work in the morning, and all of a sudden his windshield explodes. Um, you know, good for him, he, he kept it on the road and, and you know, got to safety, but, uh, but that's, uh, that can be a big problem. The state drivers, there's one plow driver in a state truck. Uh, he's operating the wing and everything else he has in there. Uh, the county routes, they, they thankfully have two people in most of theirs especially to operate the wing. So there's, there's two sets of eyes there. The state guys are very busy. Uh, they're paying attention to five, six, seven different things at once. And so they're, they're not measuring if you're moving over or not. Um, one, one of the issues we have here, uh, something to think about for you folks, is like I alluded to earlier, the, uh, the Hamburg barn, they turn around right around uh, Rice Road. So usually all the traffic cameras and everything that's on the internet is showing you the north end of the 219. And it usually looks passable. So where we noticed over the last several years where there's trouble is when the, uh, I'm not sure if it's the Collins barn or which one is down south, but they're the ones that handle from Springville north on the 219. And they have twice the road miles and half the trucks. So you're going south on the 219 coming from Orchard Park, West Seneca area, and the road's passable, you're moving along at a steady clip safely, but you know, you're, you're moving, you're thinking this isn't so bad. And then you get around Rice Road or Brown Hill Road, and it's, it's a completely different weather pattern, and the road's not plowed. So you're going 50, 60 miles an hour safely on the north end, and then all of a sudden you're riding on ice, slush, snow, you name it. And um, that's what seems to get a lot of, when we have the multiple cars off the road, from our experience, it's been for that reason. Because people coming from the north don't realize what the condition of the road is just over that, you know, the proverbial knoll. And they come over the rise and then they're off the road. And we get five, six, seven vehicles at one time. Uh, so anyway, there you go. That's the end of this. So, does anybody have any questions, or? Yes, sir. I have a question. I'm on the 219 lot. When you see these people come up out, like you said, they get somebody to get in there and you know, wait for somebody to get in Is there some way for them to mark that car so you don't have to fall down there and check it? That's a very good question. Um, we've, been, uh, we've been struggling with, with just that. Uh, that was from the, uh, from, from the last storms. Um, we'll have troopers out. And they have to check every car. So we were trying to come up with a way so that we wouldn't have to check every car three, four, and five times. Because because of that individual who did pass away in his vehicle, um, you know, we could very easily, this could be a new car, this could be uh, a car we checked 30 times. So we tried to use a, uh, someone put up the idea of a flashing stroll that they cost like a dollar each. And we could, we could hang on the mirror and activate it, and it would go for about 12 hours. Uh, fortunately, the state didn't want to buy those for us. So uh, we have we have tags that we can put on the car, but after after snowing for a little while, or snowing and blowing, that tag sort of disappears. Um, so we, the, my bad answer is we don't really have a great way to be 100% sure that this car is something that we are aware of and have checked. Um, other than some of the more dramatic things that we went out there with a can of spray paint and, you know, spray paint a big X on this car, uh, which I guess if there's snow on it, that's okay, but if there isn't, you probably would need to have to trust So, people driving with their four ways on. Pardon me? People driving with their four ways on. Yeah, I mean, we do see that. I think they're told, like, I think I think the rules, it says lower, uh, below 40 miles an hour, you're supposed to drive with your four ways on. So that's good. If you get into times with low visibility, the four ways work fine too. Um, the last blizzard, they, a lot of people were doing that, and it, it was it was good because sometimes you get a squall blows across, you can't see anything for a minute or two, but then if those lights are still on, then that will help somebody behind you see you. 
Uh, so that that is a good a good thing to do. Um, sometimes we'll, if you if your car is out on the side of the road, people will leave their four ways on. Which, that's fine. But it will, if your car is not running, it will destroy your battery. Will, will die after a short period of time. Um, but yeah, we, as far as that other question, we don't have a really good system. It, it just it relies on the guys uh, that they're, in their 12-hour time. The guys that are working that they know which cars are which. But once it switches over, then it's a whole new ball game. I mean, you see them way down the bottom, and I always wonder, what yep. do you think they walk down there and see what's in there, you know? Well, the other problem we have is uh, sometimes people, with your cell phone, if you're, there's certain places, so if you're on the 219 Orchard Park and you call on your cell phone, it might ring directly into the Orchard Park PD. So Orchard Park will dispatch their car. If, if you say, they'll be like, where's your emergency? And then you'll say, well, I'm in Orchard Park. I'm at 219 Southbound. Okay. And then they'll dispatch one of their cars. Now, someone else could be coming down the same way. Maybe they're from Tonawanda or whatever. They have no idea where they are. You know, I know I'm on the 219 and uh, I see, well, I'm passing the, you know, Boston sign or something. And so that 911 call will go to Central Dispatch. And then they'll put out, um, they'll, they'll send either an Erie County Sheriff's deputy or a state trooper to that. And it could be the same car. So that happens to us too. So we've tried to deconflict that, but that's that's why when they go into this, into when it's a serious storm and they start activating the um, the, uh, the emergency operations centers, then all the calls go to the same place. And so we try to, we can minimize that we've got two, three cars responding to the same vehicle that's down there. Uh, the dispatchers try to keep a handle on it too. What if, you know, they'll ask you, what is the car, is it a, you know, is it a black Toyota? They'll be like, yeah. Okay, so we already know about that one. Thank you very much. You know, be careful. But if you don't really know what it is, they're going to send somebody. So that sort of, it's, it's, it's just a, an unfortunate reality, but oftentimes we send multiple cars to, to what is actually the same event. Uh, but if it's just the way the system works, unfortunately. Is it good if you saw somebody on the side of the road with like a pull over ass or something to help, or if they call for help? Let's say, for instance, they didn't have a cell phone. Well, if, if you if you can do it safely, sure. But you have to you have to think where you are. If you're if you're on the 219, um, some some controlled access highway like that, I, I wouldn't advise that. I would I would make that call. Let us worry about that because you're you don't know what's coming next, and uh, that's not. Uh, this time. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, the question. The question was about stopping to ask someone if they need help. Um, and obviously, you know, people up here, my experience, they're, they're always want to help somebody else out. It's just great people up here. But um, you have to do it safely, and you can call us. Like that's what our job is. So if you don't feel like you can do that safely, you're not. You're not. You know, you're not abandoning them. You're making a phone call. They will get help. Uh, so. If, if you're on a, a road that gets very little traffic and uh, and you can do it safely, by all means, whatever whatever you're comfortable. With. But don't don't put yourself in danger to do that because we're here and we'll take care of that. Anybody else have anything? All right. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you all for uh, bearing with my. Uh, Stretch your legs, you have to use the restroom, get some refreshments. Well, we switch PowerPoints. Uh, we don't want anybody to wrestle through the chairs. Uh, we'll try and wrap up soon.